Hello students, I am Ajay Karmarkar. Before starting video, I would like to tell you something. Please sit with copy pen. If you find somewhere important, pause the video, note it and proceed on. If you find somewhere difficulty, then please write in comment box. I will definitely solve your problem. And along with, please like, share and subscribe my channel that can reach more and more students. Thank you once again. Now here is the question. A small steel ball is dropped into a long cylinder containing glycerin. Which one of the following is the correct graph? Here representation of the velocity time graph for the transit of the ball. This question is asked 31st January 2024 J mains. This question is based on terminal velocity. What is the meaning of terminal velocity? When any object which is falling freely, its velocity increases due to the gravitational force or we can say its velocity increases by its own weight. But when it is come in the contact of the liquid, two forces act upward direction. There are the first upthrust force and second viscous force. And after some time, its velocity gets constant and this constant velocity is called terminal velocity. Okay. Now, let us consider this is metallic ball which having the radius is r and it is falling down with the force f and its density is considered rho. Here, what is rho? Rho is the density of sphere, okay, and uh, which is falling down in glycerin. Let us suppose its density is sigma. Okay, so sigma is the density of glycerin. Okay, so after some time its velocity become constant. So here F1 is acting downward direction. Upthrust force for the liquid we are using buoyancy. So buoyancy acting upward direction and viscous force. F2 is acting upward direction. Okay, so here two forces B and F2 acting upward direction and F1 falling down. Okay, so its result we get net force. And this net force, due to this net force, object falling constant velocity. Is it okay? Now F1 here mass into acceleration, so mass can be written as density. Density of this metallic body sphere is a uh, rho and uh, volume 4 by 3 pi r cube and uh, here acceleration due to gravity that is g. Okay. And uh, b upthrust force that is uh, density is sigma again 4 by 3 pi r cube and g. And f2 that is already by Stokes law 6 pi theta viscosity coefficient r radius of the sphere and v is equal to your net force. Net force it can be written as mass into acceleration. So this is acceleration. Is it okay? Now we can see that here in two terms 4 by 3 pi r cube g get common rho minus sigma minus 6 pi eta r v is equal to mass and here acceleration can be written as dv by dt. Is it okay? Now this m is transposing and it can be written as 4 by 3 pi r cube g rho minus sigma upon m minus 6 pi eta Rv upon m is equal to dv by dt. Okay. Now clearly here all this value 4 by 3 pi r cube g rho minus sigma upon m is constant. So here let consider 4 by 3 pi r cube g rho minus sigma upon m consider k1. And similarly 6 pi eta r upon m 
is considered K2 because V is variable. Why variable? Because uh, any object which is falling freely, its velocity increases, but after some time its velocity decreases and then become constant. So therefore here V is variable. Is it okay? So now substitute this value here K1 minus K2V is equal to dV by dt. Okay, rearranging this uh, equation, then it can be written as dt dV by k1 minus k2e or it can be written as dV by k1 minus k2v is equal to dt. Clear? Now integrate both the sides. Here put the limit 0 to v, here 0 to t. Okay, so here log k1 minus k2v and coefficient is minus k2 so 1 upon minus 1 upon k2 okay and limit here 0 to v and here t and upper limit is t and lower limit is 0. Now substitute this limit and log k1 minus k2v upper limit and lower limit that is 0 so it can be written as log k1 is it okay minus k2 is transposing to the right side take a minus k2t here log k1 minus k2v upon k1 okay log property log m minus log n can be written as log m upon uh, n okay so here base e now it can be written as k1 minus k2 v upon k1 is equal to e raised to power minus k2 t now k1 e raised to power minus k2 t k1 minus k2 v here k1 minus transposing this term to the left side then k1 e raised to power k2 t is equal to k2 v now k1 upon k2 k1 upon k2 e raised to power minus k2 t is equal to v then k1 upon k2 get common 1 minus e raised to power k2 t this is the overall final result but what says this result means our graph when plotted between v and t that is in exponent form exponent form it uh, means velocity increases and become after some time become constant so therefore this is exponent form not proportionality so therefore our option c is correct you can see that this is graph initially increases and then become constant so here graph plotted between v and t that is the correct option i hope so you understood this question Thank you for staying till the end of this video. Definitely, when you will become success, full contribution goes to your hard work. But if my videos, my lectures, my questions will help in your success, I will consider myself lucky. Please like, share and subscribe my channel that can reach more and more students. Thank you once again. Take care. Bye-bye.